Welcome to our seventh video with data structures and algorithms. And we are going to wrap up uh, our study about insertion sort. Uh, we started off looking at the idea of it, uh, inserting elements of a list into um, an already sorted sublist. Then we started <clears throat> talking about the algorithm and how we do that, which we have right in front of us. And then we also talked about how many times does each one of these lines of code here actually run, if you will. And we started talking about the, uh, the running time with this. Now, in the last video, we, we, we counted how many times each one of these run, as I said before. And so now we need to actually compute the total running time by summing these things up and we're going to check out what the best case scenario looks like for this and the worst case and also kind of the average case. So to start off, um, we have all of those things. And now here is our function. We call this uh, a T of N for you know, running time, where obviously N is the size, right? The input size of insertion sort. And all of these constants out here are basically some sort of physical time constant, right? It's, this is this is all hardware uh, kind of stuff. How long does it take to run that very first line of code, that first for loop? How long does it take to actually execute that? How long does it take to execute the next line and the next line and so on? So all we had to do was add all these up, <clears throat> right? And now we can take a look at a couple different cases. So let's take a look at the best case right here. Best, no, that's, sorry, that's kind of bad handwriting. The best case scenario, which is um, the, whoops, that's not how you spell it. Sorry about that. The array is already sorted. So, if we just kind of plug some numbers in here, here's n, right? And I'm going to just condense these three, okay? I'm going to do some n these two as well, okay? These are going to end up being zero, but we'll see that in a second. And really, sorry, I'm using the wrong color, kind of. Um, and really, uh, those are just <clears throat> algebraic things, so catch up on your algebra if you need to do that. Okay, so the, for the first one, we have, where's my color here? I keep getting the wrong color. There we go. So for our first one, we have C1 times N. We also have, okay, in the next one, plus we have C2 plus C3 plus C7 all times n minus 1 plus now we said we showed in the last video that this is it should be n minus 1 but we'll just kind of show why that is right so if if t sub j is equal to 1 then that means that our sum from j equals 2 to n of 1 right means that. But what does this mean? Well, this is starting from 2, uh, but this is basically just like, um, this is uh, this is simply, right, this actually just roots 2, n minus 1, okay, for us as we showed in the last video. So all we have to do is just plug that in, all right, c4 times n minus 1. And if that doesn't make sense to you, check out the video uh, before this, okay? And now, if t sub j is equal to 1, then t sub j minus 1, right? 1 minus 1 is 0, so these are both 0, and that's it. Now, let's just uh, condense this a little further. <clears throat> and what we end up with is c1, right? plus c2 plus c3 plus, I'm just going to go along the line here, plus c7 plus c4 all times n 
plus, okay, and then we're just going to have all of our constants. This is going to be minus C2, minus C3, minus C7, uh, and minus C4. And if you're asking yourself why is that, it's just C2 times minus 1, plus C3 times minus 1, C7 times minus 1, 4 times minus 1. There you go. And if we look at the structure of this, okay, let's just underline these just to show some color here. Right? It's color code. It's always nice. Here we just have some constants. This is just these are just two constants. We, we don't even know what they are, but they're just constants. So here, really, uh, we're saying that. This is equal to, right, so our constant, we'll just call this a and times n plus, and we have our constant c. That's all we really have here. So we can see that uh, the best case scenario, right, t of n, that's a weird n, but it's okay, is really just big O n, okay? This is a, a linear time linear time function. And we'll just quickly demonstrate this. <clears throat> if we have an array here, right? And we've got, you know, our first couple here, dot, 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 right, all the way up to n. So this is our index 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 n minus 1, n. Okay, we can see that. In the best case scenario, we're not really changing much. All we're, all we're doing is we start from here and here and we go on, right? And we check this one and we check this one and we obviously check the one back here <clears throat> and it fails for the for loop and that's n times. So it's this big O and it's linear time. Now what about the worst case scenario? <clears throat> so our array is reversed in this scenario. So if we look at this, we can just plug things in like we did before. I don't know if I can get the right color. There we go. Right? T of n is equal to, and we're going to just kind of combine these things again. We've got C1 times n plus, here we go, da, 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 C2 plus C3 plus C7. Right, times n minus 1. Okay, <clears throat> and now plus, we're at C4 this time, C4. Now, <clears throat> we have this summation here. Now, if you recall the, uh, I think it's the arithmetic series, I think that's what it is. And I'm just going to make a, show a quick note here that the sum of j equals 2 to n. Or actually, let's let's do of 1. Okay, so we can show the arithmetic series, right? This is just the same 1 plus 2 plus 3, dot, 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 whatever. Okay? That's, that's all that is. So, what this turns out to be, and you can look this up or do the math yourself, okay, over 2. Now, we're starting from 2. So really all we're doing is we're just mining out that first one. So that's it right there. And if you do a little bit of uh, algebraic manipulation, this turns into 1 half n minus 1. OK, so that is what we can replace this with, right? Because we're looking for n values, not t sub j values. So um, yeah, I have the right color, so 1 half n squared uh, plus 1 half n minus 1. Okay, good stuff. Now, uh, we have t sub j minus 1 in here. And again, just to kind of show this, this, right? Whoops. It's going to look like this. Sorry, it looks horrible. My handwriting sucks. t sub j minus 1. We can split this up, okay? These are some rules. 
for you, minus j equals 2 to n of 1. And we saw a couple things that um, this portion is equal to this. And we know that this was our best case scenario. So this, right, we'll just circle this, is actually equal to n minus 1. So if we plug these, if we plug this in here, then what we end up with is I'm going to just write it here. This is plus, and we're going to do our constants, right? These are both the same, so we can combine this. C5 plus C, oops, let's do that. C6. Okay, and we combine these together. We, our ones, right, go away because this is actually minus, right, because they're minus sign here. So <clears throat> we have a plus one here and a minus one there, so those cancel out. We have a minus n and a plus one half n, so we are left with one half n squared minus one half n. Okay, and there is our equation. I'm going to erase this. You can pause the video and go back if you need to see that. And here we go. Fun times. Okay, now. This is a little bit more manageable for us. So let's break this down a little further. And I'm going to just do all this in one fell swoop here. We've got one C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C7. This is all going to be, oh, actually, you know what? Let's start with our higher order first. Let's start with n squared. So the first one we have is C4, and it's 1 half. C4 is just a constant, so we'll take one half of C4. Okay, that's the only n squared there. Then we have plus one half C5 plus one half C6. Okay, and there's our n squared constant. Okay, and while we're at it, let's just kind of make a note. Plus, oops, we're still doing that. Why did I just do that? Here. Okay, now our n values. Now we can do this, right? So we have C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C7 plus 1 half of C4. Okay, minus 1 half of C5 minus 1 half of C6. Now I know this is arbitrary, but some people are a little uncomfortable with doing this, so I'm going to show this. Okay, times n. Then we have our last constant, right, which is plus. And these are going to be all of our negative values as we saw before. So we have minus C2 minus C3 minus C7, right, for that one. We have minus C4 for that one. And that is it. Now, uh, I should have done this before, but it's OK. Here is our other constant. And here is some color we haven't used. How about this one? Here is our third constant this time. So clearly, right, we have a quadratic function here. And we can say that. Finally, this is equal to, whoa, I'm on the wrong color. Finally, we can say that this is equal to our a constant. We're just going to call that a, right, times n squared plus we have a b constant here times n plus our final constant at the end, c, not to be confused with these other c's, okay? And <clears throat> there we have it. Now we can say that n is equal is big O, right, n squared. Okay, and this is because we have the while loop within the for loop. Okay, and to again demonstrate that, here is the worst case, what was my color? Here is the worst case kind of scenario kind of thing. Uh, we have this, right? Here's one, two, and then 
last one, n, n minus 1, 1, 2, dot, 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 right? And for this, for each iteration through each one, right? This is worst case scenario again. We start here, right? We end up having to, actually, let me erase that. We end up having to check this one and then this one. And then for the next one, we for index three, we check this, this, and this, and we check this, 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 right? So you can see that we're going back over the array. We're checking all the way back, right? We get to the, the end, and we're clearly done, right? Check all these all the way over. So it's n squared in the worst case. Now, if we check this against, how about the average case? Now, really, in the average case, our t sub j would be equal to uh, j over 2, which, again, is just another constant. So really, it's only a matter of uh, these constants being different, and the order is still the same.